right, standing by. One, two, three. So, Wesley, we're talking about your production of I Am Eora. As a director, just purely ha having that, that entity that you want to start working on, how do you then take that material and turn that material into something that is a production? I've worked on a lot of new work, mm. and so there's part of it for me where the, that structure, that idea, that something has to take root and grow. If it, in, there's lots of ideas that don't grow. There's lots of ideas that just die and wither away. But when an idea keeps growing, the thing that keeps it fresh for me is about collaborators, bringing in a designer, bringing in a musical director, being inspired by different performers and what they might be able to bring to an idea. Because in the end, the, the theatre I like to make is when it speaks with a big collective voice. Mm. Having said that, there still needs to be some form of leadership. Mm. You know, you still have to edit and craft and bring all those collaborators into the one idea. Boom, It'll be, be boom, interesting boom, then if you boom, boom, and again, boom, 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 And boom, the net boom, comes and takes all the fish three, and you can just watch them all going. Four, yeah. six, and what's going on, what's going on, so you acknowledge it. And it sometimes doesn't become what I imagined it will be. Mm. It becomes something different. It becomes better. And how, how important is that, that spark you talk about? You know, it's a thing... Um, uh, this idea of inspiration, you know, or inspiration comes from the idea of a divine breath, an inward breath that kind of breathes life into something. So for me, I, I really believe that if you don't have that spark, you can never manufacture it. And this project has been quite difficult at times because there have been lots of challenges, but we've never let go of it because at the heart of it is something really, really important. Yeah. And you feel... For me, it's not just about a, a theatrical piece of work, it's about a, a cultural work. It's kind of digging deep into the culture of this place and bringing something to the fore. What about you as an artist? Do you, do you try to push yourself out of your own comfort zone with each project? I believe that an artist is about creating a vocabulary for the future. We are imagining what the future will be and how do we explore it together, both the audience and the performers. I think that if um, it's easy or you feel like you've done it before, maybe there's a reason not to do it. Mm. It has been done before. You're not adding to the canon. You're not adding to the body of thought around art and society, mm. that you're just playing it easy. And if, if you are playing it easy, that's all right. But I think then you don't take government subsidy for it. You mm. know, government subsidy or, or the, su the support of the people is really about innovation and moving us forward and taking us to somewhere that we, uh, we're not expecting. OK, now let's... Um, your work is always so, so yeah, big yeah, yeah, and involves yeah. so many people, but I want to get back into <laughs> Wesley land. Um, uh, athletes talk about uh, this is the zone, being in the zone, that moment where, where their, uh, their rhythms take over. Well, for, you know, there's that all flow theory. You know, you get into flow and you, you can sustain it. And I know when I'm in that mode, I can be there for hours and hours and just things come up and they seem to be real and, and speak the truth and you just keep going with it. There is a part of the way it takes over. And it's interesting the sense of, I think as Aboriginal artists, we're often trained not to have ego. Um, of course, we've all got ego, I've got an incredible ego. But the idea of saying there's something beyond us so that you know, there's a spirit of this country that kind of speaks through us. There's a responsibility to a community. But when I'm having that level of inspiration, it's something like it's taking over my body. It's something else. Mm. And um, is that something you seek out or is that something that just happens to you? I like to believe that there's, there's maybe only f three to four creative hours in a day, but you don't get to choose when they are. <laughs> I, I sometimes will just go... Flow, 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 crash. And you go, oh, what's going on now? And I kind of do the page numbering and I do the editing and I check up the fonts and do all the, re you know, mm. this is all computerised, obviously, but, you know, check the spelling on things and all that stuff gets done because you're out of flow and you just go, oh, well, just mm. know that it will come back. And I think there's a real fear. I have a fear of the blank page. You know, you see the blank page and you go, as a writer, you go, <sighs> and you see the, the, the idea, but you go, how will this ever be manifested? Mm -hmm. And there's part of me that goes, you just got to you know, pick yourself up by your bootstraps and just throw yourself into the middle of it because mm. otherwise you can make excuses forever. Yeah. Tell me about collaboration. Tell me uh, what that means for you. For me, um, collaboration is getting to know the person or the soul, the spirit behind this person that you've invited in mm. that you can get to a point where I like to say, there is no way you can offend me. 
there comes a point where a collaborator will say something and often I'm, uh, I have to deal with uh, racist issues or, or just certain ignorance in a, in a particular field and to go, they're not doing it to insult me, they're doing it to seek more information, how do I get to that position with them? Mm. So uh, the more you share, the more you get out of a relationship. Mm. And I'd like to say that also for an audience because I think audiences are the ultimate, well, they're the final collaborator that they kind of, the way they respond, the, the way, what they bring to uh, their reception of a work completes the work. Because we don't do it for ourselves, we do it for them. And finally, when do you think it's finished? <laughs> um, a visual artist said this great quote to me, um, Vernon Aki, and mm. he was saying, uh, and a, a piece of art is never finished, it's abandoned. And a piece of theatre, there comes a point where I say, now it's an element of the element of trust, there's, a, there's that kind of nervous moment of going, ah, just let it go and see what comes out from it. Mm. Or otherwise, you know what would happen as a director? I'd be there focusing on the 2% I thought wasn't working rather than the 98% that was working perfectly. Mm. But I've learned over time to say, you know, let's focus on the joy of it. The 98% that's working is what the audience is seeing and that's great. How can I keep learning from the 2% and make it, you know, 1.5% next time or 1% next time? You know, how do I kind of build a world with collaborators and everyone together to, to make sure that I can keep doing the best I can? What is it? about this vast land that breeds such innovation. Innovation in the arts. Innovation in the home. Today, kitchens everywhere have a zip hydro tap. Boiling and chilled, filtered water instantly. Australian innovation and design. Zip hydro tap, used by millions around the world each day.